Uh, let's welcome our next speaker onto stage who's going to be giving us a presentation on the evolution of grocery retail. Ladies and gentlemen, we have with us the co founder, Tata Starquick. Dot com. Please put your hands together for Mr. K. Radhakrishnan. Please put your hands together as we welcome on the stage Mr. Radhakrishnan. Welcome, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Very good morning. Okay, the green is one for. All right. All right, I, I was just reading an article today morning about Kylie Jennifer making a tweet on Snapchat saying that after she had a baby, she hasn't opened the Snapchat for the last 72 hours. What do you think, what ha what do you think happened with that tweet? Well, Snapchat lost $1.3 billion on the Wall Street. It's almost amazing. I mean, for me, it's like the penny dropping at that point. That you build a brand based on what other people say, and then your brand is on a knife edge. But that's what, that's what m millennials want to see. They want to emulate the lives of somebody else. And uh, from Shushmita's presentation, you know, I don't know where to place myself. I'm a clear silver, but I can tell you, I got two boys. One guy's 28, the other guy's 24. And I, in many cases, I'm way ahead of those guys, whether it's technologically or whether it's thinking-wise, whether it's progressiveness. So I'm not sure these kind of definitions suit everybody. I don't want to be bucketed into a silver, because I'm not. I think like a millennial, I think like a 12-year-old kid, I can think like a 12-year-old kid. With my younger boy, every day we go feed, feed five dogs every day out on the street. And uh, I think it's, a, it's the market researcher person to make life a little simple. But I think it's far more complicated than that. I know many millennials who think like an 80-year-old. I know many 70-year-old people who are still bright and think like millennials. So the problem for us today is that Life's changed so much, we don't know which way it's going. People are not definable anymore in that sense. I run an online grocery business and life becomes even more complex, therefore. So I have a few slides which I'm going to share with you. The topic that is given to me was like, I think it is called Evolution of Retail. Um, that sounded like Charles Darwin's book. Uh, and it's really as much as that, so I've, I've taken the liberty to Re-evolution of retail, right? And I think grocery retail needs to re-evolve. Uh, in my definition, it's dying. And when I say it's dying, the number of stores you have in your neighborhood in terms of modern trade has come down over the years. And I believe that's a great challenge we're going to face. This is the only industry. It's the only sector of purchase where the consumer is moving on forward and the industry is moving backwards. I don't know, Shishmita, what you think of your, your research of grocery people, but I'm not sure it's very complimentary in terms of what they're doing for the consumer. So everybody thinks, you know, life must be run out of an app. So be it. And my phone's full of apps. Everything has an app. My business runs on 14 apps. And, uh, and I can tell you, I've been working for the last 34 years. Life's never been as exciting as it is today. It's enthralling. Every day is enthralling. Because you have a discovery to make every day. You're dealing with an entity you don't know. You're dealing with yourself. Your own tastes and preferences are changing. It's really good times to live in. I think the biggest shift that's happened, and the need to understand here, is the democratization of power. The, the book called The Digital Economy, written by the two Google founders, is a great book to read. It's not about Google, it's about what internet is doing to people. And I'll talk a bit about it. 
And I think the value is moving up the supply chain. The smaller entities are getting more powerful. You need to build a brand or die. Commodity has no life. If you're not distinctive, you don't have definition, I'm not sure you can, you can survive very well. What organized retail is the penetration. So there are a couple of slides of some boring stats, but it's about 7%. I remember when I, when I joined Reliance Retail, uh, Mr. Mukesh Ambani's dream was to become a 100,000 crore retail company. And uh, that's a great vision to have, and that's only something that Reliance can do. And they are about a quarter way up there, but it's taken a long time. Indian grocery is, is like no other grocery business around the world. It's so distinctive, it is so fragmented, and to be able to discover that, I think will take a long time. This is why I said that the consumer has moved fast forward, but I think the retail trade has moved backwards. The growth of e-commerce, I think worldwide, uh, I mean, in India, is going to be $60 billion. Just to give you an idea, the market size of what Snapdeal, Snapdeal and Flipkart and Amazon and everybody else is, uh, is fighting for is something like $80 billion, the whole market. Everyone wants to take a pie of that in India. Just grocery in the top six cities is $100 billion. It's $300 billion. It's the largest, largest industry in India. And what's the percentage of online retail? Third decimal place, right? That's the opportunity. That's why I said it's a good time for me to be alive. I think there are multiple drivers of, of retail. Today, I think I called it re-evolution because if retail had gone the way it was, Five years ago, I think it would, it would have died in the next five years. With online coming on and the way people are thinking and the way people are redesigning their stores, and I think in-store Asia will do very well to think differently. We got to learn from Whole Foods. I'm, I'm out in the stalls here outside, but I'm not seeing the kind of Whole Foods kind of presentation. I'm not seeing the kind of organoleptic, you know, five sensory excitement that you can create in a store. I don't see it. The fault is not with the fixture maker. The fault is with the retailer. They are not doing the fresh produce very well. In this country, the five biggest categories which internationally are big almost don't exist in Indian retail stores. The fruit and vegetable, the meat, delicatessen, bakery, and dairy are so small or don't exist. And I discovered why most of the retail chains in India are not doing non-veg. And the reason is that Almost all the owners of the retail chains in India are either Gujaratis or Marwadis. Nothing to do with anything else. They care a shit about what the consumer wants, right? We won't sell meat because I, in my next life, I won't be in a nice place. That's why we don't sell non-veg. And I know it, I, I know it firsthand, right? And therefore, I think things have got to change, and that's why the five biggest categories that are popular elsewhere in the world don't seem to exist in our country. And we struggle in our lives to buy good meat, to buy good fruit and vegetable. The yogurt industry, and I'm telling people, people keep asking me, what's the next food? I, th I tell them it's yogurt. And Epigamia is one thing I see, but I think it's too small because the retailers are not helping brands grow. So there is with the real retail growth is driven by internal demographics and psychographics. And what do I mean by this? I think given the new breed of consumers, the offline is not living up to its own potential. The offline is low reach. You travel out of Bombay, you go to Ahmednagar, it's about, let's say, 200 kilometers from here. It doesn't have the choices of shopping that Bombay has. Why go so far? Do you think there is enough modern trade in Borivili? There is not. Several parts of Bombay is not covered by offline retail. Why? Because of cost, because of the inability of the retail chains to actually expand the way they should be expanding. High cost to serve. 
the rental, the power, and the manpower is 80% of the cost of a store. These things are not in the control of the retailer. It is controlled externally, and therefore, it's difficult to make money. Lack of agility. Retail chains are not known to be very agile around the world. They take a long time. It's like an aircraft carrier trying to make a U-turn. So they take a long time, and therefore, there's lack of agility, and that is lack of data power. Retailers offline do not understand who the consumer is. The, o the only thing they know is what category they are selling. How much of rice did I sell this month? How much of meat did I sell this month? How much of milk did I send? But who bought it? It's the same consumer coming and buying. They don't have that data. They just live in a world of their own categories and they guess what's going to sell next month. The use of data by grocery or offline retailers, I think, is a long way to go. And I think, I think people who deal with data can do a lot for these retailers. But I think the biggest change that's going to happen, the biggest change that has happened, is that it's no more, uh, it's no more, what do I say, it's uh, no more wrong to aspire. When I was growing up, they would probably bucket you and say, this is where you are and that's what you can aspire. What's your income level? Then you cannot have a flat TV. You're, you're from this economic strata, and therefore you cannot aspire, even aspire. Forget about buying, you cannot aspire to be here. Today, it's not a crime to aspire. It's my right to aspire. Whether I buy or I don't buy, I have the right to aspire. I have the right to think that I can get there. That, I think, is the biggest power that the internet has given to the people. And I think the poor must get more and more of it. The digitization that the government of India is doing is the best thing that can happen. It's not because you want to courier some cell phone to them. It's because of the information, because of their ability to, to impact the lawmakers, the policy makers, and to come out into the open and not depend on some local goon who rules their life. That is the biggest power that's happening. We haven't seen anything of it. With the kind of internet speeds that we have, I don't think we've done enough. That will change over the next three, four years. The penetration of internet is going to change. And I think the democratization of power is what we are seeing in this world. And I think we will make the powerful more well-behaved than they ever were in their lives. And I think the internet is changing the behavior of people. I lived in Delhi for many years. I was born in Delhi. I was bred in Delhi. The last five years I spent in Delhi. I think after, after the independence, India is not known to make many monuments. Other than the Vidhan Sauda, I cannot think of any monument that we have built. Other than destroy what we had, I'm not sure we built great stuff. And thank God for the Chennai railway station. When they extended it, they built it like the old one. And it's still pretty. But when I lived in Delhi, and I believe the biggest achievement after the independence is the metro rail of Delhi. Four lakh people travel on it every day. And you look, you look at the way this is happening. The four lakh people reasonably stand in line. I'm not saying they're always standing in line. But they're not jostling and they're not hitting each other and breaking each other's leg to get into the train. You wait for the next train. The metro train works 100%. It's clean. There are no graffiti. People don't eat inside the train. People don't play loud music. And people even offer me a seat to sit because I have gray hair. And it's not a Delhi kind of behavior that you actually see in metro. I'm from Kerala, but I'm all, all, almost like a Delhi wala, so I don't mind saying it. The Delhi kind of behavior you don't see inside the metro. The metro has changed the way people behave. When I was a kid in school, they used to tell me, the way you live is the way you think. And that's more powerful than the way you think is the way you live. You may think in a particular way, but to be able to live that way, sometimes is not easy. But sometimes your environment makes you think differently. That's why it's important to keep your... That's why Swachh Bharat is so important. The great story about two houses. Both the houses were empty. Both the owners went away from the city. One owner didn't care about his old house. 
So it was weedy, and the glass was broken, and there was crochet all over the house. But the other house, the other house, the owner would come back, and he would look after the lawn, even though he's not staying there. He would paint it, he would mow the lawn. What happened? The one which was not cared for had graffiti. People vandalized that house, and that's exactly what happened. It ran down. But this house, nobody vandalized it because it was neat. When I used to run stores, I used to tell my store associates, if you keep the store clean, the consumer will behave in exactly the same way. And I believe Uber is a great example of how behavior changes. How many of you have an Uber app on your phone? Raise your hands. Wow, that's a lot, right? And how many of you know that you have a rating on the app? See? I have a rating of 4.7, which I think is low. Some taxi driver who may have, I might have told him to drive properly, probably marked me one. But, but you know, everybody is wishing the driver when you're getting out of the car because you don't want your rating to go because tomorrow Uber may give you during time of scarcity, depending on your rating, he may, they may actually send you a car. In my online business, the, de the, the delivery boy who's going to make the, make the delivery in Andheri West Next, from next month, we're going to do the same thing. We want the boy to rate the consumer and the consumer to rate the boy. And I think it is, it is changing. It's a two-way. Both the consumer is also equally incumbent to act in a particular way. And I think it's, again, I, I come back to the aspiration bit. It's a singularly the most important thing. When, when Flipkart ran its uh, billion dollar day or whatever they call it three years ago and their site crashed, one of their friends was telling me that, you know, they got so many TVs coming out of a town, Ongol. Many of you won't know where it is, but it's on the coastal, coastal Andhra. How, how much time would it take for any of the big electronic retailers to actually set up a store in Ongol? It'll never happen in a lifetime. I remember when I was Food World, I, I used to run a chain called Food World from Chennai. When Tropicana launched in Chennai, at that time, there were not other, many other retailers. I'm talking about 1998. When Tropicana launched, it took them four years to go to Coimbatore. Four years. And because my truck was running from Chennai carrying everything else, I used to distribute Tropicana to Coimbatore. And even today, how far has Tropicana gone? Has it gone to Ahmednagar? Has it gone to town, tier two towns, tier three towns? I don't think so. But this allows you to do it. Somebody is aspiring, there is money there in the town. The boy who works for me in the house, he's from Bihar, my man Friday. And he does everything in the house. The cooking, the washing, the cleaning, the, wash, the car. He says, I'll do everything in the house. And I think he makes far more money than some of the grads, some of the engineering grads who actually graduate out of home. My mission in life is that I must see the guy lives well, right? He lives in Darbanga. He lives four hours away from Darbanga. He goes home. He used to go home once a year. Now I insist that he goes, down, goes three, three times a year. Every time he goes, the money that I give him, you'll be surprised what he buys. He buys Oreo biscuit. He buys Dove soap. This is amazing. And I told him, what do you do He says, we Dove sabun and we cut it in pieces. Or Hamare neighbors ko sab dete. He's become the distribution man of Dove soap in four hours from Darbanga. That's funny and that's sad. What's the distribution power of any of these companies trying to grow at 2.5% year on year when there are 90% of the market there who doesn't have anything? That's the opportunity. That's what the internet does. There's an aspiring population there, but we are stuck in our andheris and Mulund and South Bombay and South Delhi and what what not. I think we have a close mindset. People have to understand this country a bit better. We live in a world of feast and famine all the time. I, as a, when I was running Reliance Retail, I was in Salt Lake in Calcutta, out on the street, and I found the price of tomatoes was 24 rupees a kilo. On that at that very time, in Hoskote, in Bangalore, we were buying tomatoes at one rupee eighty paisa. And I went back and told Mr. Ambani, so why don't we take, a, take an aircraft 
fill it with 20 tons of tomato and pay the farmer five bucks instead of one rupee, then fly it out to Calcutta and actually sell it at 20 rupees or 10 rupees or five rupees, whatever the cost was, 10 rupees, and make life cheaper in Calcutta and make the farmer richer. Of course, it is a great idea and that company has the strength to do it, but eventually we didn't get to doing it because what will happen when you land tomatoes from Bangalore uh, in that state, we don't know. But that's the, that's the problem. Businesses in India run on arbitrage. Something's available somewhere, something's not available somewhere, there's somebody who makes money between the two. We are a nation of arbitrages. Uber is an arbitrage. I stay in JVLR, 9 o'clock, my fare is always 300 bucks. Why should it be? Because our distribution is not right, our supply chain is not right, I don't have enough number of cars on the road, why should I pay 300 bucks to travel? Right? Somebody is taking advantage of the inefficiencies that exist in our country. I believe our problem is the hourglass problem because you have millions of farmers and you have millions of consumers and they are just not getting what they should get. All right? So I'm going to skip some, some of these slides. It will be available on the, on the net. But I believe that the role of retail was to de-bottleneck the place but the hourglass problem has not started. I believe the value chain erosion is happening forward, and I believe with the internet coming and information going, value will flow from the brands backwards, okay? You must build a brand or die, but just a couple of slides, and I'll, I'll close with this, and I have one video to show. I think this is the most important thing in shopping today, involvement shopping. Things have moved from being involved to non-involved. Whatever is non-involvement shopping will move to the internet. All books purchased, electronics, uh, uh, flight tickets, everything is moved 100% online. But buying of tomato, meat, and clothing is still involvement shopping. Involvement shopping is where you need to go deep into what you're buying. That will always rem may remain outside. Groceries was considered at one time involvement shopping. I don't think it is any anymore. Uh, I have some slides. I had a case study on Gillette, but that's all you can do with the time that you have. And I think the retail landscape, the online is going to shoot. That's going to become where people are going to shop. And the omni-channel, that's the, that's the site that I run. It's called stockwick.com. We've launched in Bombay. We are out of Andheri West. You must Four have seen ago, this, but it's worth looking at if you haven't. It's the Amazon Go. What would shopping look like if you could walk into a store, grab what you want, and just go? What if we could weave the most advanced machine learning, computer vision, and AI into the very fabric of a store so you never have to wait in line? No lines, no checkouts, no registers. Welcome to Amazon Go. Use the Amazon Go app to enter. Then put away your phone and start shopping. It's really that simple. Take whatever you like. Anything you pick up is automatically added to your virtual cart. If you change your mind about that cupcake, just put it back. Our technology will update your virtual cart automatically. So how does it work? We used computer vision, deep learning algorithms, and sensor fusion, much like you'd find in self-driving cars. We call it Just Walk Out Technology. Once you've got everything you want, you can just go. When you leave, our Just Walk Out technology adds up your virtual cart and charges your Amazon account. Your receipt is sent straight to the app, and you can keep going. Amazon Go. No lines, no checkout. No, seriously. That was my last slide, but I want to leave you with a counter contra point to, to this. And I have a biggest problem with what's really happening as well, is the problem of privacy. They know what you look like, they know what you eat, they know when you sleep, when you get up. I think the biggest problem is privacy. I have written on my LinkedIn blog, with Google, I have the biggest problem. I went to the Play Store, I wanted to download something, they forced me to accept that they can send me notifications. That's not on. And that's 
the next biggest problem that we're going to face. I don't want to be a public property. I hear the bell. Thank you very much. Sir, continue to be with us on stage. That was completely inspiring. Love the session. Ladies and gentlemen, as we come to the end of this session, we've got our three questions. We're going to request Professor Dwarka Prasad Unial, who is the Assistant Dean at Dehradun Campus. I am Kashi Poor. Thank you so much for being here today. We're looking forward to the, the retail quiz that you're going to host a little later today. But right now, it's question time. Uh, good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be uh, back with InfoRacia after a long time. So uh, my job is to keep answering. Uh, that's what I do. But this time, I'm asking questions. So Mr. Radhakrishnan, uh, very interesting questions have come up. I had a difficult task of picking the top three. But uh, three questions. Uh, one question is from uh, Mr. Ramit. Uh, Sanklia, the question is, does your evolution of grocery retail only target at Generation X, coming from the previous speaker? What happens to the evolution for Generation Old? Are they equally adaptable in, in using new technology, especially in your business? Yeah, good question. Uh, the first consumer I got from Andheri West was, uh, her name was Mina, and uh, she ordered something for 2,000 bucks. And uh, we delivered home, and she called the call center and said the kind of meat that she got was not what she wanted. Now, we get a consumer, we get a complaint from the first consumer, that's damn serious. So I took my car and went to her home to meet her. She stays somewhere near Varsova, and she was a 73-year-old doctor, and she had downloaded the app, and she had bought on the app, and she says, just my life changed today. I can order grocery without stepping out of my home. And I think that's the point I was making right in the beginning, that I don't think it's right to compartmentalize people according to behavior. They will operate across technology. Perfect. I think yeah, you got your answer, Amit. It's not necessarily the demographic, but in terms of their ability to adapt to new technologies. And if your grandmom is on, on WhatsApp and Facebook, you better be worried about your updates. OK, the second question is from Tam Tanvi Nimbalkar. The question is, online food buying takes away the factor of freshness. That's an assumption here. Grocery and foods so should stick to arousing the five sensory excitement. So in terms of what you're talking about, whole foods, ex ex uh, excitement not being presented here in terms of real retail offline. How can an online be able to push for that? So that's the question she has that, OK, you're talking about that freshness and everything else but how are you going to replicate or at least deliver that promise to the consumers? Sure. So I'll, I'll talk for myself. The model that we have is that we l bolt onto a store which has a very good offering of fruit and vegetable. The Star Bazaar and Dheri West has, does fruit and vegetable, meat, uh, dairy, and delicatessen very well. So we deliver within three hours. And we, we take good care of actually packing the fruit and vegetable and dairy in an ice pack when it gets to you, OK? Now, I can challenge you that even if you come shopping to our store, you will not be able to deliver kadak ice cream to your doorstep, rock hard ice cream to your doorstep. Even you cannot do. That's why we don't sell enough ice cream. We deliver my supply chain yardstick is the day you do kadak ice cream to your doorstep, your supply chain has arrived. We are able to do it only in the case where you have less than three hours delivery from the time I pick in the store and it's in your home. It's an hour and 15 minutes, which is roughly the shopping time that you take if you were to come to the store. I can deliver it in the quality that you see in the store if you were buying on your own. I guess in your case, you're able to do that a lot more because you already have an offline presence. Yes, yes. And hence, you're able to make it more omni-channel than somebody exactly. who, who does not have that kind of a presence in the offline Absolutely. format. So Absolutely. that answers your question in terms of you can smell offline by online. Just, just, just one point. Yeah. I go back to the slide of non-involvement shopping. I think fruit and vegetable, if, you, if the offline stores lay out the fruit and vegetable very well, which not many of big, big chains do, then I think it's a challenge for online because it's, a, it's great fun buying fruit and vegetable and meat if it is laid out like they do in the West. Yeah. 
Yeah, that, that, I agree with you on that. Uh, the third question, which I felt was very interesting, very, very apt for Instoratia is, do you see the investment on retail ambience will become drastically or it will reduce obsolete with the advent of augmented reality and virtual reality in near future? So a lot of you who are working in, in that particular space, uh, how do you feel? So what's your answer on that? No, I think it's, it's going to accelerate. It's, it's going to help, help wherever we are. I think uh, artificial intelligence, your data mining, will make you sharper. I think it will make you more relevant to the consumer. Instead of pushing stuff to the consumer, the consumer doesn't want, now you can send to the consumer what the consumer wants. I think it's going to accelerate, accelerate it. I think this whole thing about job losses and stuff like that coming from AI is something in the future. We don't have to worry about it. What is important is to use this technology to make your understanding of the consumer much better. Give to the consumer what the consumer wants, when they want it, and the form in which they want it. Perfect. Uh, thank you, Mr. Radhakrishnan. Now the uh, difficult task of choosing the best the, one. The first question. Uh, about the age one? Yes. Okay, perfect. So Amit Sanklia, can we have you on stage, please? Congratulations. Congratulations, Amit Sanklia. You asked the question that gets you to win 10,000 rupees from uh, InSync Shop Fittings. And thank you so much, Mr. Radhakrishnan. That was an amazing session.